Hi everybody, it's Nat from Studio Hacks here. And in this video, I'm going to help you fix problems with audio and MIDI latency in Ableton Live 10. This will actually work in any version of Ableton Live. So what is MIDI or audio latency? Well, it's if you've popped your headphones on to record some vocals and you are monitoring your vocals through Ableton Live and when you're talking, there's a delay between when you're singing and when you can hear it. The other thing is I've got a MIDI keyboard here. So sometimes um, when the settings are not optimized for your system, you can hit your finger on a key and then there'll be a tiny bit of latency between when you hit and when you hear it, which is really annoying, makes it very difficult to play. Um, and depending on how powerful your system is and how much RAM and things like that you've got and also the audio interface you're using, you may have bigger problems with uh, lag. But even on a really good system with a really good, um, you know, uh, amount of RAM. If you have the wrong settings in Ableton Live, you can run into these issues. So the thing that you need to adjust, the parameter, is right under the Live menu up on the top left hand corner under Preferences. And you want to look right here under the Audio tab and the buffer size is what we are going to be looking at to fix this problem. So basically this will affect your MIDI and your audio and this is the general rule of thumb. The further you have it up to the high end, so the top three settings, the more likely you are to have audio latency when you are recording. The closer you have it down to the bottom end, the better latency you will reduce the amount of latency and it will be a lot nicer to play and you won't have any of that lag but if you get too close to this bottom end on a not very powerful system you will get horrible audio dropouts and digital distortion and your recordings will be useless so to pop it all the way up here so normally normally when i'm recording on my quite good system here i have it at 128 and you'll see here that I'm only getting 2.67 milliseconds of input latency um, and that the output latency so anything under about five six even seven anything under about ten I don't think you'll really hear the difference um, but you'll see when I crank it up to the top I'm getting 42 milliseconds now our ears can really easily hear things uh, that there's a problem, you know, above 20 or 30 milliseconds in latency. So I'm going to hit my finger on the key. I can hear that. It's going to make it really difficult for me to play. Yeah, that's really annoying. So I'm going to pop this down to 128. Let's try this now. So that's working okay, but you can hear I'm getting those crackles and pops because this is a really uh, intensive plug-in that I'm using. It's the Electric 88 from Waves. It's really thirsty and you'll see uh, up on the top right hand corner there, there is a, I've also purposefully got a bunch of other programs open in the background to try and overload this system to show you what happens. So this little meter right here is the system resources meter and it's showing you how much of the CPU is being used. So you can see even just by having this instrument open and having some of my other programs open in the background, I'm already up at 25%, which is already for me in my brain going danger, danger. And look what happens when I play. It's going up above 50. Normally, if you get above 40 or 50% on there, you'll start having dropouts. So you'll see it gets really bad if I go one down low. That is just disgusting. Let's try this setting, 256. Yeah, I did hear a little one. Let's try a 512. Yeah. 
That's actually fine. 10 milliseconds is okay. Yep, I'm happy with that. So this will be exactly the same for any instrument that you're recording if you're monitoring through your headphones. Um, and I normally monitor my um, instruments directly through my studio monitors. Um, so this will this will be different for every system. Um, and if you want to fix some of these problems, it's a really good idea to um, close some of the programs you've got open in the background. If you have, you know, things like Google Chrome uh, is particularly bad. Web browsers are doing all sorts of things in the background that you're not aware of. And that can really fix this system monitor here. And um, some other things you can do. I mean, I've... I've got uh, 16 gig of RAM on this system, which is sort of okay. Um, I'm just about to set up my, my new system. It's going to have more than that, but you really want a minimum of eight gigabytes of RAM. Um, so if you've got four gigabytes of RAM and you're trying to do audio production, you're going to really, really run into some problems. So I would um, definitely upgrade to 16. 16 is my kind of benchmark minimum for audio production, especially when you're using um, third-party VST plugins. You're just going to have headaches upon headaches. Um, so muck around with your buffer size. What I normally do, now um, you will have more dropouts down this end and less latency. Down here you will have less dropouts but higher latency. So when I'm recording, I set it to a, a reasonable setting that works, but when I'm mixing and when I'm, you know, doing my mastering and mixing, I pop it all the way up to the max because it doesn't matter if we have input and output latency when we're just listening to our music and making adjustments to the mixing. So that's all about the latency and buffer size. This is a really important thing to know when using any digital audio workstation because it can cause massive headaches if you don't know how to fix these problems and you'll be pulling your hair out. You've probably found this video because it's happening to you and you searched online and you came across my video. So hopefully this has helped you. If you have any questions about this, pop it in the comments section of the video and I will get back to you. I usually get back pretty quickly depending on how busy I am. So I hope you enjoy this content and if you found it valuable, do subscribe and uh, drop a like on the video. It really helps me out to make future content and helps my videos appear in the search results. Makes the YouTube algorithm happy. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.